Hello everyone, Helen here. How are you doing? I hope you're okay. And thanks for stopping by to spend a bit of time with me today. And yes, I'm in the camper van, but don't get too excited if you like going on a trip because you've just got to wait a little bit longer for the next trip. But I've got quite a few camper van related things to chat to you about. So I've got some crafts and a few things that have been added to the camper van since I last uh, chatted about that and even a bit of baking today. So I hope you're going to enjoy all the things and I've got such a long list of things to remember that I've actually written it down here. I've got my list here so if I look down there it's because I'm just checking what I'm going to talk to you about next. And uh, so yeah, um, let's let me get on with it. <laughs> No waffle. Um, uh, so first of all, I'm just going to tell you about uh, my current project that I'm busy knitting. I am somewhat obsessed. You might have noticed if you've been here a few times before with Cynthia Valle's Motion Friends book. And so I'm just uh, most of my crafting time is focused on that book. And uh, the, my current project, new project, which I forgot to show you last week. Uh, is this little character here whoops oh dear it's got slightly tangled up with the yarn oh there we go and here he is this is the orangutan which in cynthia's book is called henri i think probably because she's french or henry uh, i might call him that i haven't quite decided he hasn't kind of spoken his name to me yet so yeah and I'm really, really enjoying him. As usual, I feel like I've got to know him already because he's got his little cute little expression there look, and his little eyes looking at me. <laughs> so, yeah, so he, he's very lovely. And, oops, let's just move. Woo! Dear me, drop the needle. Oh, no. Oh, dear. <clears throat> needle gone under the cupboard. Okay, I'll sort that out later. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, yes, so I, I am really enjoying making him. He is, I'm using um, some yarn that I got from John Arben Textiles. It's their Knit by Numbers, because uh, that was the colour, I just, that was the colour that I found and I've never used the Knit by Numbers before. It's just, I think it's 100% Merino yarn. I'll put it on the screen if I'm wrong. And to begin with you just use the knit by numbers the the single strand but then you join in a mohair to give this really fuzzy effect and i think you've got to brush it afterwards as well to make it even fuzzier and yeah so the the big challenge with this animal definitely are the hands because being an orangutan being a primate he's got a hand with a thumb and five fingers and that is really one of the most challenging things I have knitted. Um, it, I wouldn't say it was difficult. It just took a long time because you were knitting each thumb and finger in the round with only four stitches. And by the time I got to the last finger, uh, it wasn't so difficult because I didn't have any other stitches on hold. But all of these other, oh my goodness, they really took me quite a while. Um, the contrast colour yarn. I'm just using my one of my favourites, Knit Picks, Knit Picks palette four ply. Uh, yeah, so you can probably see from this, I have made a start on his first leg there, and then you have to do the feet in the same colour as the hands. So yeah, he's he's really lovely. I probably will give him uh, a bit of a bath when I've finished making him, before I finish stuffing him, because it's, yeah, it's a fairly dense fabric and not very flexible. So I think that'll just help to relax all those fibres when uh, when I give him a little bit of a bath. So that is the orangutan. And I actually took him away on the camper van trip that we've just been on, but which I haven't had time to make a video of yet. And so when you see that camper van trip I actually won't be as far on as I've just showed you there. So yeah. My last project, which uh, loads of you commented on and, and given a lot of love for, with uh, uh, well, both of the little pigs that I made, 
but last last week I was sharing the um, the little girl one Rose with you, and uh, one of one of my lovely new viewers Marina. So hello Marina, who's in New Zealand, and she loves making Cynthia Valle toys as well. And if you fancy going and visiting her, well, virtually of course, unless you live in New Zealand. Um, <laughs> She has a podcast as well, and it's called Strawberry Patches, and I, I think you'll really enjoy being in her company. Uh, she also spins and dyes yarn, uh, but she does love making little cute animals like I do. And anyway, so she asked me in the comments if I could explain how I had done the uh, made the pattern on the skirt for the pig because she'd just be making the sheep and it uses the same skirt pattern and yeah so so what I did was make a little sample and then uh, made a little video uh, to show how I added the vertical stripes because in the pattern it says to crochet the stripes on uh, using surface crochet chain and it does uh, seem to me uh, uh, quite a <laughs> quite a fiddly way of doing it and as I told you last time my mom had suggested just sewing it on embroidering a chain stitch and it really was quite straightforward so so I've made a little video to show you of how I did it so let, let's have a look at that so this is just uh, Showing you first of all that I've done a, it's about a seven by one rib, and in the dip there is where you're going to put the uh, vertical stripe. So you need to just pull it apart a little bit so you can see where you, where you need to put your needle, and come up in the middle there with your contrast colour yarn, and leave enough yarn uh, for when you want to sew it in later and then we're going to do chain stitch up this central ridge so you're going to go back down the place that you first put the needle in and then go come back up about a couple of stitches later and go Oops. Come through the yarn so that you're making a little loop there. That's the chain. That's the first of your chain stitches. And just pull it, not too tight. And then when you put your needle in next, you put it in the other side of that loop. Put it in. Come up a couple of stitches later make sure your needle is going over your yarn there so that when you pull it through you make another little loop with a chain stitch there we go and then again down up a couple of loops later make that loop of the chain stitch and keep going like that so so as long as when you put your needle back in there don't go inside the loop of the chain that you just made but just the other side of it and then yeah a couple of loops later and pull it through oh that wasn't so good but anyway hopefully you get the general idea there and when you get to the other end, you simply take the needle through to the other side and that all looks pretty neat and tidy. And then you'll just, it's easy to sew in the ends there because you have this ridge here that you can just put your yarn through. So I hope that was a little bit of help anyway for 
anybody who might be making the animals from Motion Friends and, and wanting to make that skirt. It's, it's the pattern used for the skirt for the little girl pig and also the skirt of the dress that uh, is for the sheep. And I haven't quite decided which animal I'm making next. Obviously, I'm still making the orangutan, but Cynthia Valley has just uh, announced on Instagram that she's going to have a knit along uh, from, I think, from next month for the rest of the year, where we can just all join together as a community of makers of her animals, any of her animal patterns, and then just post them and encourage each other and share our progress on Instagram. So I'm looking forward to joining in with that. So that, that should be that should be really good fun. And yeah, so I think that is it for projects that I'm doing at the moment. What am I going to talk about next? Oh yeah. So yeah, so quite a few of the things I'm chatting about today are just things to do with the van, as I said. And one of the things that I've just done um, is to change Pearl, the doll into her summer outfit and hopefully you can see here she was wearing her winter outfit and decided that it was about time well we were having some nice warm weather and he decided it was time it was time for her to change into her summer dress take off her boots and put her little sandals on have a sun hat you know to protect her from all that sun i'm looking out and seeing rain at the moment but never mind <laughs> Uh, let's let's hope for more sunshine here. If you haven't met her before, Pearl is our camper van mascot, I suppose, and she travels with us all the time, along with her little friend uh, Dean the dog. So this is uh, Pearl and Dean, just in case you haven't met them before, introduce you properly. So yeah, so Pearl is all ready for the summer, for the summer of uh, going off on more travels, and. And so, yeah, another thing, let's put the orangutan out of the way. So the other thing, another thing I was going to talk about is just uh, crafts that, or projects that I take away with me in the camper van. And ever since we first, pretty much since we first went away in the camper van, over a year ago now, uh, I've been using this lovely tweed bag as my uh, project bag, or to keep all my projects together. And I decided to make the rule that Anything that wouldn't fit in here, I couldn't take. So this bag will will hold probably three projects. Most of the time, I just take two projects with me, usually a knitting one and, and one crochet one. And yes, I found that I don't usually work on more than two for a short trip. But for a longer trip, which we're going on soon, I will put three projects in but I just thought I'd show you my plans or talk about my plans and I've got two beautiful new project bags this is the first one and uh, when I saw that Jeanette from Crafty Clegg Creations had made uh, some bags using this kind of vintage camper van style of drawing on it I just I thought oh I would really like to have that as a project bag for when I'm away in the camper van. So I'm very, very happy with it. It's a lovely big one as well. You can see that I have already filled it. And I filled that filled it with one of the projects I'm going to take on our longer trip that's coming up uh, with a new book that I've bought called Crochet Collage Garden. And I thought this would be a really nice project to have away because it, I can just make lots of little elements and I've got one or two ideas for what I'm going to do with the uh, all the flowers and leaves and things. But I think that will that'll be really lovely to have away. And I've just put a selection of um, different coloured yarn, escapees stone washed in my bag. Oh, sorry. The thing with it being in the camper van is that I could get distracted by people come coming by. Oh, dear me. So if I'm looking out, it's because there's probably a car coming along or something. Uh, dear me. And the other, uh, I've got another new project bag, uh, which is this one here, which I bought from um, So Re Me. And again, it's just some little vintage camper vans on the on the fabric. And uh, I am going in there, I'm going to put a brand new cowl 
project because Marina of Strawberry Patches podcast, who I've just been mentioning, uh, she is running a cowl along from the 1st of August. And I will leave a link to her podcast, to her YouTube channel, and and then you can find out more about the cowl along if you fancy joining in. It'll be on Instagram as well, so I'll see if I can put the her uh, Instagram um, and Ravelry details as well. Or you can just go along to her podcast and then you'll find that out. So I'm going to put that in here. I haven't decided on the colours yet, but hopefully um, I'll show you that another time or when I'm on the trip or, or whatever. So that's that one. And then there'll be one more project in there for our longer trip, which is probably going to be uh, not an actual animal, although I don't know, I might change my mind. I might just uh, take the um, clothes, the pattern for the clothes uh, for whatever animal I'm working on. And so that'll, those will be really nice uh, selection of small projects. Oh, and now, uh, a big distraction happening is the bin lorries have just come to... Uh... <laughs> oh, can you hear the bin lorry? Right, I'm just going to sign off for a moment and come back. Okay then, I think the uh, the bin lorry's gone. It's, it's a recycling collection day today, so it's particularly noisy with all the glass being thrown in. And uh, Yes, I can't really talk over that, can I? That's, that's the hazards of being out in the camper van when it's just on the drive at home. Um, we're in quite a quiet spot, but there's still a few comings and goings. Anyway, I've completely lost my train of thought. Um, I think I was talking about, oh yeah, I was talking about, was I talking about the cowl along? Yeah, anyway. Um, the, I, I don't think I said that the pattern that I'm going to do is a cowl called Like Candy. And it's a... Uh, it looks like to me a good way of using up lots of mini skeins or just you know oddments of yarn because you can make it as many colours as you want to. So I'm really looking forward to uh, to having a go at that, and it'll be a lovely thing to have a go at. I think last time I probably said I'm not joining in joining in with any knit alongs or make alongs, but actually I would like a new cowl, and so yeah, I can justify it that way. <laughs> And the Cynthia Valle's uh, knit along that she's doing while well, I'm making the animals anyway. So that's not really um, taking extra time that I wouldn't already be using. So anyway, uh, one of the new things that we've got for the camper van for our, for our next trip is a fantastic seat back cover. Um, not cover, storage. Well, it does cover that. It covers the back of the passenger seat and it's got lots of little pockets in it. You can buy them and they're usually black or grey, but I found this most gorgeous fabric, uh, camper van related fabric, and bought it and asked my mum if she would kindly uh, make a, a storage thing for the for, to hang on the passenger seat. And she has made a wonderful job of it. <laughs> she uh, she's put some quite uh, thick and stiff wadding in it. No, I think it's probably got thick wadding and then quite stiff stiffener, whatever that is. I haven't made it, so I don't really know, but she made it quite stiff. However, it's still, when you put things in the top pocket, it still was flopping forward a bit. So I had to make some some alterations to that to make it work. And we also were hoping to just use some self-adhesive uh, Velcro to stick it down at the bottom because obviously the, the back of the seat is sloped and we didn't want the storage thing swinging about. We wanted it to be secured to the seat. But it turns out that self-adhesive Velcro doesn't stick to our um, seats in the car. So, uh, so I had to think again and so yeah, came up with a couple of solutions for the for the top of the storage thing. I just basically I uh, found a flat piece of wood, nice stiff wood. Uh, well, Phil found it for me in the garage, and I made it a pocket out, out of similar fabric to the back of the storage thing, and uh, and then just sewed that all in place, and that works perfectly now that it's around the headrest of the seat. That's good. And then at the bottom, um, 
I found that there was a little ridge at the bottom of the seat where I would be able to hook something under. So I found a couple of uh, quite big hooks that I had bought for putting onto somebody's trousers, I think, but they weren't quite right. So I attached some finish elastic and then sewed that onto a wider bit of elastic and then that just hooks under in two places uh, at the bottom of the seat and that's working perfectly so that's really good and yeah I thought you might like to see what we're keeping in it at the moment all getting ready for our next trip and so yeah I'll show you that now so in the seat back cover at the moment in this top pocket uh, we've got a puzzle book and a book that I'm planning to read on my next trip in the footsteps of sheep. I'll tell you more about that separately. Um, in this pocket at the moment I've got some of these, well, it says mosquito repellent, hopefully midgy repellent bracelets which one or two people have recommended to me. Down here we've got some sun lotion and some midgy repellent yeah while we're away in Scotland or other places where there are midgies and here is a book that Phil is reading oh no this is our oh yes Phil's wild guide to Scotland and then here this is a book that Phil's reading at the moment oh upside down Cheesemonger's History of the British Isles. It's a book all about Jesus. And then in this pocket here, especially designed for me by my mum, uh, is a little tripod. So my mum had a little bit of the fabric left over after she'd finished making the storage thing. I don't know what to call it. I keep calling it the storage thing. Um, and she asked me if I'd like her to make something out of that. And I had the perfect thing. And that, in, in the back of one of the back cupboards here, there's just uh, a toilet roll. <laughs> and it just kind of sits there by itself and it's gradually getting a little bit uh, the worse for wear. So I asked her to make a bag for the toilet roll to go in. So it now has its own posh bag. So I'm very happy with that. <laughs> Ah, yeah, so um, what am I going to talk to you about next? Oh yeah, so I was just going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the other things we do, or I do, to prepare to go away. Uh, because one or two of you have asked before, you know, do I, you know, how much planning do we do about where we're going to go? And uh, obviously we do ha have, usually have a, a vague idea in mind at least of where we're going to go. And for our next trip, definitely we know uh, because we because we want to go to one or two islands, Scottish islands that we haven't been to before. Uh, then you quite often you, you really need to book the ferries in advance. So we've done a bit of booking of ferries or, already. So I've done uh, quite a bit of research on the two islands that we haven't been to before. Uh, just to find out what, what interesting things there are to see there and where the shops are and I think one of the islands has got one shop and the other one has got oh it might have two or three and you know where where the toilets are where there are cafes and that kind of thing so so yes I do a bit of internet research and I put them into my camper van notebook so this is a notebook which I take with us just for scribbling in. It's got all sorts of things in. It's got the our checklist of essential things to take with us and a, a packing list. And I also put in here any, you know, little bits of information about the places that we're going to. And another thing that I try to do before we go is to draw a map or two of the area that we're going to that I'll then use in the podcast that, are, that I do about the trip and so I've just been doing that. I've made a couple of new maps. Eventually I probably won't have to make any more maps will I? Uh, certainly in, around the UK uh, although there's quite a lot of the UK we haven't been to in the camper van yet but um, yeah so I, I'm going to show you 
how I make my maps, which I mean, it's not, nothing complicated really, I just thought you might like to see it. And another of the things that I usually manage to do before we go away is to make some kind of cake to take with us or cookies or something like that because uh, I don't know it's just really nice to have a bit of home-baked cake while you're away although we do often find lovely food in the places that we go to as well but it's just something oh, it's just just nice having having a, an extra little bit of home with you and one of the things I love to make is a fruit cake, and I, I found that I hadn't actually videoed me making a fruit cake before. And I'm going to uh, make a real favourite recipe of mine in a minute. I did, of course, have a little look at the uh, origins and history of fruit cake uh, to see if there's anything interesting to tell you, and. Apparently the first, the, the kind of the earliest known fruit cake type of thing is from ancient Roman times. I did read that uh, the Egyptians had some sort of fruity thing as well, which wasn't really like cake. And in fact, the, the one that the Romans had was more like an energy bar. So the, they combined uh, dried fruit and nuts, pine nuts and seeds into a kind of a barley mash uh, with some honey and sometimes wine and it just made a kind of energy bar which uh, the, certainly the soldiers like to take off into battle with them and uh, you know keep, the, keep them filled with energy. Uh, the, the first fruit cakes that are really like the ones that we have today though um, are just are certainly were made in the Middle Ages so kind of around the 1400s, around that, that sort of time. And they were much more like the fruitcakes that we have today. And although quite often they were called plum pudding, but it, it didn't mean like, sometimes we think of these days, we think of plum pudding as being a Christmas pudding, but it's not. It's just pudding. The word pudding was used for all sorts of things, including cake. And... Uh, so yeah, so that the, the, those cakes really were quite like uh, the ones that we have today. Although I, I say that the the main kind of fruit cake that we have in Britain and America is different to um, a lot of places in Europe where the the fruit is really in more of a ready kind of thing like panettone or or stollen and uh, yeah so Britain and America have kind of similar fruit cakes <laughs> and apparently I was really really interested to read that uh, the some fruit cake was found at a an Antarctic 
base camp, which dated to 1910. So it was possibly a fruitcake that the explorer Robert Falcon Scott took with him on his Antarctic uh, expedition. And it was just left behind in this base camp. And it was still, it still, apparently it looked uh, as though it was going to, it looked and smelled edible and it still looked in pretty good condition. I don't think anybody's actually tried it, uh, but <laughs> that was fascinating. 1910 and the fruitcakes survived. And there are actually examples of older fruitcakes than that. Uh, whether anybody's actually tasted them, uh, I don't know. But anyway, um, fruitcakes can have a bit of a bad press as being something that's a bit dry. And one of the reasons that I love the recipe that I'm going to show you today is that it's, it is always nice and moist. And I think the main reason for that is that it uh, also, as well as all the fruit and cherries and things, it also, um, yeah, one of the ingredients is uh, crushed pineapple. And that is just, oh, it just makes the most delicious cake. And I, I don't know where the recipe actually originated. My auntie gave it to me and it's just written down in my one of my first ever recipe books, Delia Smith's Complete Cookery Course. It's just, you know, written down there in the back of there. And I don't know where she got it from, but I think this kind of cake is called a boiled fruit cake. Not that you boil it up, you don't, but you you melt the ingredients in a pan and then and then you add the flour and eggs afterwards. But uh, when I came to make it though, I found that I didn't have a tin of crushed pineapple, uh, but I did have a tin of pineapples. So I experimented with just putting them in the food processor and the, the result was just like the stuff you get in a tin of crushed pineapple. So if you want to make this and you haven't got crushed pineapple, then I just recommend you puree up a, a tin of pineapple chunks or uh, rings so yeah so uh, um so this is this is me um my last thing for today and uh let's go into the kitchen
Right then, well, I am going to go now and hopefully when I return next week, it will be a little video of our most recent camper van trip, which was just a short one. It was just a two day one, but uh, well, we, we did pack quite a lot in as usual. So hopefully that's coming up next week. If it's not next week, it'll be the week after. Um, just just depends how uh, how much time I've got to uh, to make to make that video. Uh, if it's not next week, then I'll just pop in with another chat about something else. But uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll be here next week and introducing our last trip to you. So until then, keep yourself nice and busy. Take good care of yourself and I'll be back again very soon. OK, then. Bye.